For Albrecht's talk this year, I wanted to examine Felix Wilbur Gingrich, the Albrecht professor after whom Gingrich Library is named. Our library is currently undergoing a major renovation, and its name will likely change as a result. So I wanted to take this opportunity to explore who Gingrich was before we lose some of his presence on our campus. Gingrich is best known for his Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament, the English-language version of Walter Bauer's Greek-German lexicon. Gingrich worked on the translation with another Greek scholar, William Arndt. Their work became a classic, and well-thumbed copies can be found in Greek departments and seminaries throughout the English-speaking world. It was effectually nicknamed B-A-G, Bag, after its three authors, Bauer, Arndt, Gingrich. It actually became one of the best-selling works to come out of the University of Chicago Press. The Albright College archives hold much of Gingrich's work for the project. As was standard practice for this kind of lexicographic work, Gingrich recorded every word with its meaning and examples on a separate note card. These note cards were then assembled and converted to page proofs, and finally into the finished product. In order to work on the translation project, Gingrich negotiated a five-year leave of absence from Albright. I'd like to see a current faculty member get that deal. Yet, this arrangement resulted in a substantial piece of scholarship that shaped New Testament studies for a generation, and it has become Albright College's most substantial contribution to scholarship to date. Before Gingrich began work in the dictionary, he published a series of articles on the state of Greek lexicography, such as this one on New Testament lexicography in the future. During his career, Gingrich published over 50 scholarly articles, book reviews, and lexicographic notes, primarily on New Testament studies. Gingrich brought his zeal for scholarship into the classes he taught at Albright. He covered a wide range of courses, including Greek language, linguistics, religion, and ancient history. This 1957 syllabus for Religion II, New Testament, shows the importance Gingrich placed in understanding large themes and on broad reading. Throughout the semester, students had to fill in a detailed outline involving topics such as the reign of Herod Antipas, Jewish religious institutions, and Greek philosophical movements such as Stoicism. In addition, students had to construct their own auxiliary reading list of at least 400 pages of material, which they would tackle throughout the semester. A project not unlike current fourth hour assignments. In addition, Religion II students faced quizzes and a term paper of 1,500 words. The word count of the term paper might be a, a bit light by today's standards, but the quizzes, outline, and student-constructed reading, reading list show a dedication to content mastery and to individual exploration and research. We get a sense of Gingrich's classroom manner from his notes for the initial lecture in Greek 8a, Classical Civilization from 1937. Gingrich first establishes the importance of history through Santayana's quotation, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And Gingrich then briefly sketches out the disciplinary tools of history, amongst which Gingrich numbers languages, archaeology, economics, psychology, sociology, and several others. Gingrich clearly understood the notion of interdisciplinarity, a word that had not yet even been coined. Finally, Gingrich claims, quote, We are now moving toward a uniform, worldwide civilization. 
this was achieved by the ancient world on a smaller scale. Gingrich is attempting here to show how the study of the ancient past connects with the concerns of the present day, and how remembering the past can help us to navigate new realities. There is no doubt that Gingrich loved Albright College. In fact, he was involved with Albright from before his birth. His father, Felix Moyer Gingrich, was both an Evangelische Gemeinschaft preacher and briefly president of Schuylkill Seminary, one of the ancestor institutions of Albright College. Felix Wilbur Gingrich's, that is the son's, love for the institution is tangible in his magisterial history of Albright College, published in 1956 and co-authored with fellow Albright professor Eugene Barth. Barth and Gingrich not only combed through the college archives and publications, such as the Albrightian, but also did fieldwork at the locations of Albright College's ancestor institutions, where they were often invited in for cups of tea by local residents and shown old papers and pictures hauled down from the attic. Reading their history, I am struck by how vital a student newspaper is to an institution's historical record. The next historian of the college will find a more difficult task in front of them. Official publications show what a college would like to be, but student publications Reveal what a college is. Maintaining the vitality of the Albrightian should be a major institutional priority. It's no surprise that Albright honored Gingrich's retirement in 1972 with an academic festschrift issued by the well-known publishers Brill. Eight years later, Albright named its then new library after the college's most renowned scholar. This isn't the end of the story, however. Even after his retirement, Gingrich maintained his passion for making the New Testament accessible to all. Gingrich's commitment is most clear in a work that was published after he retired, The Simple English Bible of 1980. The translation team, of which Gingrich was a part, aimed to use colloquial English syntax, and it limited vocabulary to the most common 3,000 words in English. For example, here is the start of Matthew, chapter 3. During those days, John, the one who immersed people, was preaching in the desert in the land of Judea. He said, Change your hearts. The kingdom of heaven is very near. This is the man whom God talked about through the prophet Isaiah. There is a voice crying out in the desert. Prepare the Lord's road. Make his paths straight. Contrast this with the translation from the now popular NIV. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. In comparison to the NIV, the simple English Bible syntax is certainly more direct, possibly even choppy. Especially striking is the refusal to use standard churchy language. While the NIV refers to John the Baptist, the SEB talks about John, the one who immersed people. Where the NIV says, repent, the SEB writes, change your hearts. Such phrasing was a deliberate effort to remove the layer of theologically laden vocabulary 
in order to reveal the core meaning of the original Greek. In the festschrift for Gingrich's retirement, Barth termed Gingrich a lexicographer, scholar, teacher, and committed Christian layman. That's a wonderful summary of the man. Gingrich had laid out the arrangements for his own funeral, which was held on campus in 1993. In the gospel passage selected, Jesus refers to the house of his heavenly Father, in which rooms have been prepared for us. We can hope to meet Gingrich there. As always, let me give a shout out to Sid Dries in the College Archives, None of these materials would be here without him. Happy Albrechtstag.